Good afternoon, everyone. It is great to have you guys on the Cohort Grad Rate Appeals webinar today. It looks like people are still signing in, so I will wait a little bit more and then start. Okay, let's get started. Everyone joining today is muted, but if you have any questions presentation, you can send questions to us through questions pane. Simply type in your question and click send. If you need a technical assistance, please let us know. Taylor is monitoring and will do her best to help. We have posted our presentation as a document so you can download and follow along. Our presentation is also being recorded and will be posted on our website along with a transcript of the presentation. My name is Ayaka and I coordinate cohort graduation rate activities. I have been working on the grad rate and reviewing your documents and appeals for the last five years at least. And so many of you probably have talked to me in the past. It is great to have you all here today. Someone the other day shared his kids and dog pictures and said, here's what I'm up to. And so I thought that it was kind of fun. And I saw so I'm sharing this picture. I went to Kitchum a couple of weeks ago for the, oops, the, um, for the, the trailing of the sheep to clarify, these are not my pets or it is not me in the middle, but I thought it would be fun to share the excitement. And we also have Taylor today. She's the assessment and account program specialist, and she's helping me with this webinar today. Today, I'm going to provide you with a quick introduction and the information on the review, appeals, and re-appeals window. We are then going to talk about what we at the SDE look, look when reviewing your appeals. With that, here's what i like you guys to take away from today's webinar. After the webinar, I hope you understand what to do now and during the appeals and re-appeals window. In addition, I hope you understand the review criteria and what reviewers are looking for in your appeals. What is not in today's webinar includes the detailed definition of cohort graduation rate. We are not going to discuss how graduates and cohort members are being determined. We hosted a webinar in May to discuss these detailed inf information and definition in the business rules. If you have not watched it yet, it is available on our, on our YouTube channel. The introductory webinar was hosted with regional IC, special education, and school choice coordinators. And I think it is really informative. If you have not watched it yet, I recommend you at least flip through the presentation slides. The handout link that we have on the screen is connected to the preview application. When the preview application closes upon the opening of the appeals window, you can find the same information on the landing page of the appeals application. Let's start out by talking about the purpose behind the whole thing. Why do we care? We have two important measures to finalize for stakeholders. One is five-year and the other is four-year 2021 cohort graduation rate. Both four-year and five-year cohort graduation rates are posted on our report card and used for school improvement, improvement calculation to allocate resources to schools in need. The measures make us all accountable for tracking down former students and encouraging them to stay focused in their education. This year, we, finali we are finalizing 2021 five-year and four-year cohort graduation rates for the cohort class of 2020 and 2021. Cohort class is not the same as graduating class. It is formed among first-time freshmen in the 2016-2017 and 2017-2018 school year, respectively. The students may transfer in and out of your school in their four and five years of their high school career. However, the cohort assignment never changes. When they start their freshman year for the first time, the clock starts ticking. The question is very simple. Did they graduate within four years? And if not, did they graduate within five years? Cohort members are then further divided into three groups based on their last IC exit code. Graduates, non-graduates, and out of cohorts. Out of cohort group also includes homeschool or private school students who have no intention of graduating from your high school as evidenced by their ICPH school field. As you can see, all public cohort members are deemed non-graduates, except for students whose last IC exit code is graduates, 4A exit code, early graduates, 
4G, 4H, or 4I exit code, foreign exchange students, 5F exit code, or deceased students, 6A exit code. Cohort graduation rate is calculated as the number of graduates divided by the number of graduates plus non-graduates. In the preview and appeals application, you can move the students who had a qualifying exit with evidence into the out of cohort bucket. An arrow on the org chart shows this effect. If you keep the numerator the same, but decrease the denominator, the percentage goes up. In other words, if you keep the number of graduates the same, but decrease the number of non-graduates, the cohort graduation goes up. I'm going to pause here a bit so that you guys can digest the information. Please raise your hand virtually and type your questions if you are confused. Okay, so what do I mean by qualifying exit list evidence? Here is a list of qualifying exits. If the actual exit reason is not one of these like transfer to adult education 3D, the exit reason is considered unqualifying. So how do you move your qualifying exit Swiss evidence to the out of cohort bucket? You get three opportunities, review, appeals, and re-appeals windows. During the preview window, you can submit evidence for those students with qualifying exit whose actual exit reason was the same as the last IC exit reason. During the appeals window, you can still submit evidence for those students with a qualifying exit whose actual exit reason was the same as the last IC exit reason. But in addition, we can also submit evidence for those students with a qualifying exit whose actual exit reason was different from the last IC, IC exit reason. During the re-appeals window, you can resubmit return appeals. We're going to talk more about these windows in the next section. You guys still with me? I wanted to clarify the difference between the actual and IC exit reason. For example, the actual exit reason, same as last IC exit reason looks like this. The registrar received a records request from Washington and exited a freshman. Both the actual exit reason and the last IC exit reason should be 2C out of state transfer. You can submit evidence in this case a records request for these students during the preview window. On the other hand, the actual exit reason different from last IC exit reason looks like this. A sophomore was going to come back in the following school year, but the registrar received a records request from a private school in town over the summer. In this case, the last IC exit reason should be 1A, same school, but the actual exit reason should be to be transferred to private school. Similarly, a junior dropped out of school. The last IC exit reason should be 3A, drop out. Six months later, the registrar received a records request from a virtual school in Utah. The actual exit reason should be 2C, out of state transfer. Now, do you see the difference? It is not your IC's co IC coordinator's job to keep submitting corrective uploads to the SDE. You instead can submit an appeal for those students whose actual exit reason is different from the last IC exit reason during the appeals window. I'm going, going to pause here a bit so you guys can digest the information. Please raise your hand virtually and type your questions if you are confused. Do I need to appeal? People ask me, but my question to you is, do you need to appeal? You decide based on your own data available in the preview application during the preview window. Do you have any questions before we move on to the next section? We do have a question, Ayaka. If we submit an appeal, do we also need to correct the information in our system? That is up to the exit code. Actually, we're going to talk about it a little bit more in the next section. But um, if the, um, like we said earlier, if the exit code was correct at the time of the exit, you don't have to fix it 
Um, but for example, if you are coding graduates as dropouts, um, we would need uh, you would need to go back and fix the upload and then submit an appeal during the appeals window if you don't take care of it during the preview window. But we're going to talk about it in the next section. Thank you. And then we also had a question. Um, do we have a list of all of the exit codes and can we share them? We have a list of exit codes. Um, it's in the IC website. I can share the link with you guys. And I can do that too real quick. I have to. Okay, thanks. And that's our, those are the only questions we have for right now. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, let's talk about preview window. The preview window is open when the appeals window is not open. It is closing this Friday for the four year 2021 cohort graduation rate. The main purpose of the preview window is for you to preview your data. Here's a URL to the preview application on which you can view your data. Please contact your technology director to gain access to the application. Once in the application, here are the list of things that I'd like you to specifically look for. One, list of schools. Two, glaring submission errors. Three, wrong core assignments. Four, incorrect exit codes at the time of submission. Five, incomplete in-state transfers. And six, submit box button. We are going to discuss each task for the next several slides. Item one, verify list of schools. First of all, I'd like you to make sure all high schools in your district are represented, represented in the application. We do our best to pick, our, uh, pick up new schools and map out closed schools. However, you ultimately know your schools and then district the best. If you have any schools missing or wrongfully represented, please contact me today. Item two, fixing glaring submission errors. In the past, we have had folks with zero graduates because everyone was coded wrong. Please make sure graduates are coded as graduates. If not submitted correctly, the alternate to fix the issue is for you to submit a copy of transcripts for every single student who was coded wrong. It will be awfully time consuming, especially if you work at a large entity. Class will still require to, you to fix the exit code VIC as the um, appeals application does not fix the underlying exit code. Nobody wants his or her proud graduates to be stored as dropouts, for example, in the state data system forever. In the same reason, I like you to make sure graduates are coded as graduates. If you see any issues, please contact your IC coordinator. If you're the IC coordinator, please work with the regional IC coordinators at the State Board of Education to correct the issue. Item three, fix wrong cohort assignments. Do all members belong to the 2020 and 2021 cohort? Please make sure your list does not consist of no shows or a kindergartner, for example. In the past, we had elementary school students included as a cohort member. Similarly, we have had some unknown students included as a, as a cohort member. Yes, known students. At first I thought, what do you mean by you don't know your students? But it turned out that the IC file included students who started but never finished the registration process. You look for those students during the preview window. Even in the air, if you claim any attendance for your students, they're yours. It is your responsibility to provide them with educational guidance. As I stated in the last webinar, you may be the last adult who can make a difference in their lives. You can check the student cohort enrollment details to learn how each student has been assigned to your particular cohort. I will show you this in the next slide. Once in the preview app, select the little triangle right next to the EDU ID. This shows the cohort enrollment details in which enrollment record assigned the student to the particular cohort. If you see any issues with the cohort assignment, please contact your IC coordinator. If you are the IC coordinator, please work with the regional IC coordinators at the State Board of Education to correct the issue. Once the preview application ends and we take a snapshot of the data for the appeals window, 
All I can do is to remove the student from the cohort. I will not be able to reassign students to the correct cohort once the preview window closes. Please make sure to address the cohort assignment issue prior to the appeals window. Exception to this is for out-of-state transfer in 12th grade repeaters whose cohort year has already ended in another state by the time they enrolled in your school. For example, say a student transferred to your school from Oregon earlier this year whose cohort year is 2020. If you uploaded the student under grade 12, you IC in, in the October IC file, and if the student had never enrolled in an Idaho high school, the student would be automatically assigned to the cohort class of 2022. If you find students who fit in this scenario, please submit an Otis ticket with a copy of his or her transcript under Secure Information Submission, Documents, and Accountability. If you don't know what this means, please feel free to contact me and I can walk you through. Again, once the preview application ends and we take a snapshot of the data for the appeals window, what I can do is to remove the student from the cohort. I will not be able to assign the student to the correct cohort once the preview window closes. Please make sure to address the cohort assignment issue prior to the appeals window. I'm going to pause here a bit so you guys can digest the information. Please raise your hand virtually and type your questions if you are confused. We have quite a few questions, Ayaka. First, okay. is unknown an acceptable exit code? Yes, unknown is an acceptable exit code. If you don't know what happened to, the, to your student, unknown would be the right code to use. Thank you. Um, someone says, I am not able to open my preview window for 21-22. Um, cohort class of 21-22. Is that what you said, Taylor? Yes, I, I'm assuming that's what was meant, yes. Okay, um, the preview application is open, so you should be able to select it from the drop-down menu up on the top, but if you cannot, um, if there's no information listed in there, please send me an email after the webinar and I can look into it. Thank you. Um, Someone also said the link shared only lists the appealable exit codes. Is there a link that shows all possible codes, including non-appealable codes? Um, yeah, so the IC website should include a list of all exit codes. I can um, look it up and then share it with you. Yeah, that might have been a user error on my part. I thought I shared the correct link. <laughs> Um, next, in the past, the transcripts were not accepted. Has this changed recently? Um, I think I would need more information on what kind of appeal you made with the transcript to answer your question correctly. Thank you. Quite a few people are saying there was no student breakdown for the 21-22 the numbers are there, but no student information. Um, there's quite a discussion on it in the chat if you wanna take a look. Thank you, in the preview application, correct? I will go and check to see what's going on. Another question, if a student enrolled but never showed up, do we get a verification of enrollment from a previous school or would it be our school that it stays with? If a student never shows, then you don't have to submit the student through IC. And if you don't submit that student through IC, we'll not pick up the student in the application. So you don't have to provide any evidence if that was fixed correctly through IC. She followed up and said, it is on our report. If you are seeing no shows on your report, I would contact your IC coordinator. And if you are the IC coordinator, I would contact the regional IC coordinator to see why that child is showing up on the um, preview application. Thank you. Will you be giving us the appeals date window? Appeals window will be provided in the next section, yes. All right. 
right? And then about the transcript question, she followed up and said, you mentioned in a few slides back to submit a transcript of the student who graduated. Let me go back here. In this slide about changing cohorts? She said, yes, I believe so. This question, uh, this, this slide right here, this is about, the, yeah, this is to show that the, the child is in the wrong cohort. So if the child is not in the 20, so this year is going to be 2020 and 2021 cohort, if the child started before, well, this is kind of tricky because if the child has been in your school and was not originally not counted towards the right cohort, then we cannot approve your appeal. But if this is your, if the child has already been counted in a different different state and then moved to Idaho after the um, cohort year ends, then you can submit a transcript to show that the child belongs to a different cohort. And I just shared the um, link to ID unit record collection items and option sets for 2021-21-22 school year that lists exit codes, all exit codes. Let me know if you cannot open it. We have a pause on questions for a while. I haven't seen anything new pop up. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, let's move to the next slide then. What to look for number four. Item, item number four, fix the incorrect exit reasons. Sometimes fixing the exit code and resubmitting the IC file saves you time. This is only true for those exit codes that are automatically processed, including graduates for a exit code, early graduates, 4G, 4H, and 4I exit code, foreign exchange students, 5F exit code, or deceased students, 6A exit code. And if you go back to the slide that I had earlier with um, the org chart shows which exit code these are, so you can see uh, later. One of the biggest mistakes that we see is that many foreign exchange students are exited with 5C exit code, which is US student participating in a foreign exchange program or 2D exit code, which is out of country transfer. If you correctly code the foreign exchange students with IC exit code of 5F, they are automatically assigned to the graduation status of out of cohort. But if they are not, you will need to provide evidence to move them over to the out of cohort bucket during the appeals window. Similarly, I have seen people coding all the special education students with 4C, which is the code for completing adapted, modified, or differentiated course requirements as determined by their IEP team. As you know, there are many special education students with an IEP who can fully meet the graduation requirements with or without accommodations if you code them with 4A, they are automatically reported as graduates. But if they are not, you need to provide evidence, in this case, a copy of transcript, to move the student over to the graduation uh, graduate bucket. And you still need to submit a corrective IC upload to fix the exit code. If you don't know the difference between 4A and 4C, please follow up with your special education department to clarify the difference without assuming what 4A versus 4C means to your students. And lastly, we have seen public students being coded as private homeschool and vice versa. I have seen graduates removed from the cohort because they were erroneously coded as PH school, which if you remember in the earlier chart, assigns the graduation status of out of cohort. If you see any of the issues described above in the preview application, immediately contact your IC coordinator for a corrective upload. I'm going to pause here a bit so that you can digest the information. Please raise your hand virtually and type your questions if you are confused. We did have a follow-up question. 
could you please go over the wrong cohort again? Yeah, sure. So this one, okay. this one. So we are talking about those, re only those repeating seniors whose cohort has already ended in a different state. So if they have already in been included in your in their four-year cohort graduation rate calculation, we don't want it to assign a, a new cohort year for these students. So say the student was going to graduate in 2019, and that student was counted in Oregon as non-graduates. And two years later, he shows up in your school and say, hey, I wanted to continue my education. Can you take me? If you decided to take the student, the only way you can well, you in some schools they start out grade grade eleven or grade twelve, based on um, based on age or credits the student has. But regardless, the, the student has already ended his cohort in 2019. But there is no way for us to know that in IC grade level assignment, because if you code the student as grade twelve this year we would automatically put the students in the cohort year of 2022. So I, you, you are more than welcome to claim the student, I guess, but you can also say, well, this student doesn't belong to the 2022 cohort by submitting a transcript showing that the child belonged to 2019 cohort via Otis. I hope I made that clear enough. I will see if they want you to follow up on that one. Can you go back one more slide before the next question? Is that the one, Anita? While I wait for her to answer. One more? Okay, yes. Is there any change in reporting life skills students? No, there's no change. Thank you. Special ed students who come back as fifth year seniors, are they coded as 4C for alternate graduation requirement code? They should be coded as 1A. That's what the special education department would say. If they're continuing and coming back for the next school year, they should be coded as 1A because they're coming back. But if they completed their requirements and they're not coming back, then 4C would be the right code. But if they're meeting all the requirements, high school graduation requirements, with accommodations not adapted or modified or differentiated requirements, then those kids should be coded as 4A, not 4C. But again, if you don't know the difference, and it's, of course, different for each student, you would uh, you would want to follow up with your special education department. Thank you. Follow up to that. Then does their cohort year change? No, cohort year never changes. It once assigned, being assigned to a cohort year, cohort year doesn't change. Thank you. Sorry if this was answered, but what was determined with not being able to see the students anymore for 2020-2021? Uh, the preview application, I just checked it's working for me. I don't know what is working for you. Please send me an email and I'll work with you after the webinar. Can you go over this slide again, specifically the first and third bullets for a little bit more understanding? Yes. What to look for? Three. Yes. So the first bullet, do, do all members belong to this year's cohort? Um, you wanted to make sure that the, your cohort members only, so if you're looking at, okay, so there's no, the preview application doesn't provide you with 2020 cohort members because we've already taken a snapshot for 2020 cohort members last year when we calculated their four-year cohort rate. The play, in the preview application, you can only see the 2021 cohort members. But when you're in the preview application and looking at 2021 cohort members, I would like you to make sure that they all started fresh their freshman year in 2017, 18. Yes. So 
sorry, I needed to write it down, 17, 18 school years. So you wanted to make sure all your cohort members, 2021 cohort members started their freshman year in 17, 18 school year. And it doesn't mean that they started their freshman year in your, in your school. They may have started their freshman year in a different school. And then by the time they came over to your school, they were junior. So say they were junior in 1920 school year, then they also belong to 2021 cohort year. And I think that makes sense. And for number three, check the student cohort enrollment details to learn how the student was being assigned to the particular cohort. And that was this um, screenshot right here that you can see, you saw it to your high school and under EDUID, click on the little triangle right next to EDUID, you can see the student cohort enrollment details. And in that, you should be able to see, I'm trying to open up because it's kind of cut off at the end, but it shows cohort start, school year, and grade level. So you can see how, which, which enrollment record assigned this particular student to this particular cohort. by looking at the student cohort enrollment details. And so that's what I was suggesting. If you have any questions of how your students has, have been assigned to this particular 2021 cohort this year, you wanted to look at the little triangle and look into the details. I hope that helps. Thank you. Then someone said, I can view students via preview for cohort years 2021 through 24-25. Do I need to review any cohort preview beyond 2021 at this time for four or five year appeals? And when will the preview open again to stay on top of cohorts 21, 22, 22, 23, et cetera? Okay, so preview application will be closing this Friday because we're opening up the appeals application, but we'll open up the preview application when we are done with appeals window which will be in January or February timeline. So if you wanted to work on 2022, 23, four cohort members now, you're more than welcome to do so because they will come back to you or, um, I mean, if you're around, but um, you, can, you don't have to do it right now because the focus is 2021 cohort members and you can come back in February to start working on different future cohort members. Thank you. If a freshman student starts his cohort year with another district, but only received one credit during his freshman year, should we put him in as a sophomore in our school? I think that's a um, question to you each. We don't have a guidance from the state department. We, um, there's no requirement at the state level you can code them as, I think each school determines their own um, criteria. Some schools code them as freshmen and the other school code them as sophomore. But regardless of how you code it, cohort assignment always comes back to the first, um, first grade level that has been submitted in VIC high school grade level, grade nine through 12. That's what determines the cohort year. Okay, thank you. If we do a corrective upload to fix an exit error for a graduate or foreign exchange, et cetera, in IC, we will still need to submit an appeal documentation starting next week, correct? Um, so going back to this slide, this right here, if 4A, 4G, 4H, 4I, 5F, and 6A, these, if these are coded correctly, they will be automatically assigned to graduates or out of cohorts. So you don't have to submit any appeals or documentation. Again, we are trying to move these non-graduates over to out of cohorts. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving quickly here. Where were we? Okay, I think this is the section. Okay. Item five, incomplete in transfer 
in state transfers. If you see any of your cohort members in the preview application who you thought have transferred to another Idaho public school, please do not just ignore. What this means is that the receiving school never uploaded the student the IC, at least under the same EDUID. What this means to you is that your school is still responsible for this student. When this happens, immediately contact the receiving school. In-state transfers have to be verified by IC. In-state transfers include in-state transfers to public virtual schools like K-12 and Idaho Virtual Academy. Item six, find the submit docs button. As we discussed earlier, preview application accepts documentation for those students with qualifying exit code whose grad status is transfer, non-grad. If you file transfer evidence for these students, please feel free to start submitting documentation. And here's, uh, here's a list of what to submit during the preview window. Each exit code requires specific transfer documentation. For example, private, non-public, and out-of-state transfers require records request and enrollment verification form. Well, records request or enrollment verification form. 2E, homeschool transfer requires intent to homeschool form signed by the parent or guardian, as well as a letter or email from the parent or guardian. We still accept withdrawal form this year, however, because we have seen forms like homeschool slash GED slash dropout, which we do not know how to process, we will not be accepting withdrawal form as homeschool transfer evidence starting 2022. The intent to homeschool form also shows that you had a conversation with the parent or guardian about homeschooling and their responsibility. Homeschool is education directed by the parent or guardian, which allows them to choose their own curriculum. Homeschool is intentional and is not the same as self-study or independent study. Do you have any questions? Yes. Someone said, should I be able to preview the 2020-2021 students? It seems to be the most important. Or after the preview closes on the 25th, I will be able to see them? It seems like I should be submitting items now in the preview window. 2022 appeals will not happen until the next fall. We are concerned about the class of 20, cohort class of 2021, because those are the students that we will be appealing uh, next week. So those are the kids that you, you should focus on if your time is limited. Thank you. In 2022, what documentation are you going to require for homeschool? In 2022 will be an intent to homeschool form or a letter or email from the parent. Thank you. What did you say you aren't accepting for homeschool? Uh, the withdrawal form. Great. Uh, the form that the signs or parent signs before they exit the school. Thank you. If I have a withdrawal form, do I also have to have a letter from the parent as well? Uh, if you're talking about homeschool, yes. They, if you only have a withdrawal form that says homeschool and it's signed by the parent in 2022, will be um, requiring intent to homeschool form or a letter from the parent. And where do we obtain the intent to homeschool form? That's available on our preview application. Thank you. And what if they aren't homeschooling? Um, I think I need more information to respond to that question. It was a follow-up from, if I have the withdrawal form, do I also have to have a letter from the parent as well if they aren't homeschooling? Well, if they aren't homeschooling, then you cannot appeal the student as a homeschooler. Thank you. Someone said, I'm a brand new high school, uh, and will I not have any 2021 data that I should be submitting for preview, and how do I get access to the preview ap application? Um, please contact your technology director to get access to your, to your preview application. And there was a tip, it looks like. For those of you struggling to see kids in the preview window, I had to close out of IC completely and go back in, and now I am seeing the details, and it looks like that's working for a few people. So try that if you're still having issues. 
and I don't see any questions popping up. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Okay, so let's talk about appeals and reappeals windows. The appeals window opens next Monday for two weeks. The reappeals window opens on December 6th for, for uh, one week. The main purpose of the appeals and reappeals window is for you to appeal your data. Here's the URLs to the appeals applications on which you can submit appeals. Please contact your technology director to gain access to the application. Once in the application, here are the list of things that I'd like you to specifically look for. Grad status of non-graduates, create appeal button, and the reviewer's work. We're going to discuss each task for the next several slides. But before I do that, I'm going to bring back this chart as a reference. Remember, we are moving qualifying exits with evidence in the non-graduates bucket into the out of cohorts bucket. So whom should we appeal? Qualifying exits with evidence in the non-graduates bucket. It does not make sense to appeal graduates as graduates or out of cohorts as out of cohorts unless you missed the preview step and did not correct your underlying data. Similarly, it is nice of you to provide dropout evidence for your dropouts. However, appealing non-graduates as non-graduates does not produce anything but more work for you and for us. Please do not appeal those that are still enrolled with unqualified exit codes or qualifying exits without evidence. In the appeals application, you will find the create appeal button. Once you click on the button, the submit appeal pop-up screen opens up. The appeals application accepts documentation for any students. However, as we discussed earlier, focus your effort on those students with qualifying exit code with evidence. New this year in the appeals application include the required actual last exit reason for each appeal. They used to be pre-filled with the last IC exit reason. However, this is no longer true. In addition, you cannot select the actual last exit reason that does not change the grad status. What this means is that you cannot appeal graduates as graduates, out of cohorts as out of cohorts, and non-graduates as non-graduates. If you cannot find the exit reason that you are looking for while filing the submit appeal screen, please contact me. Types of documentation needs to be submitted in the appeals application as evidence. Please use the link here for more information. The same link is available on the landing page of appeals application once the preview application closes this Friday. Lastly, we do our best to minimize any errors. However, please resubmit your appeal if you have any questions on the reviewer's work. Our email address is first initial last name at sde.idaho.gov. You will find the username at the bottom of the submit appeals pop-up screen. For example, my email address is anuki at sde.idaho.gov. Do you have any questions before we move on to the next section? Yes. Can you go back to the slide that has the dates on it so we can get a review on that real quick? This? I think so, thank you. And while they are writing that down, I have students exit reason within districts to same school, but they both went to another school and I have records requests. I cannot submit docs as there is not an option. What do I do? So I assume that they went to another school out of state? Um, because if they are in Idaho school, they would automatically be reassigned to the um, receiving school. But to answer your question, you can do, do submit evidence during the appeals window in the appeals application. As we discussed earlier, preview application on, in the preview application, you can only submit document for those kids whose IC exit reason is the same as the actual exit reason. Thank you. And then will you go to the next slide real quick, please? And these are available in the chat. Yeah, if anyone can't download the slide deck, please let me know because all of these links and dates will be available on there too. All right, and those are the only questions for now. So we're gonna go over behind the scene work so you know what reviewers look for when, you're, when we are reviewing your appeals. And what is here is very simple, tailor, me, and screen. 
we sometimes invite others to pitch in to process the large volume of appeals. And here's what we see, um, what the screen looks like from the reviewer's side. In addition to what you see in the submitter screen, we also have access to the doc submission change log and I see high school enrollment history, but they are very similar, right? When we review your appeal, we mainly check these things. First, submitter's comments. Second, file name. And the third, actual document. For the actual document, we check name alignment, document type, document date against the IC exit date, and document date against cohort year. I'm sharing this info as I'd like you to check these points also before you submit your appeal. Check point one, submitter's comments. It is very helpful when comments include the name of the student, entity to which the student transferred, date of transfer, and evidence. For example, Buster name, transferred to Denver High School in Denver, Colorado, entity on October 20, 2020, 2020 date. Records request attached evidence. Buster name, parents, entity, was Drew Buster on October 20, 2020, date. Intent to homeschool form attached evidence. On the other hand, it is not very helpful when comments do not provide any detailed information like transferred was true or left school. Checkpoint two, file name. It is very helpful when the file name includes the student's name, like what is displayed on the screen, Buster, Bronco, RR. It is not helpful when the file name does not include the student's name, like DOC, blah, blah. At this point, if your comments and file name show your competency and understanding, we may approve your appeal. If not, we'll move to the next checkpoint. Checkpoint number three, actual document. Thank you, Lewiston High School, for sharing the notice of intent homeschool form. I filled it out as an example for Bengal Par. Here are the things that, I, that we check in the actual document. These points should be reflected in your comments as well. And again, if they are, we may not check your document. One, does the name of the document matches or closely aligns with the name submitted VIC? Is the document type acceptable for the actual exit code? Three, does the date on the document matches or closely aligns with or after the exit date submitted VIC? Four, does the document date plenty before the end of the cohort year? We'll go over each of these points in the next several slides. 3-1, name alignment. Make sure the document belongs to the student you are submitting an appeal for. Please note the, the name change in the comment section. Again, naming your document with the student's name helps when you are uploading document into the application. 3.2, document type. Please make sure the supporting documentation or evidence is appropriate for the actual exit code. Different actual exit code requires different supporting documentation. For example, withdrawal form signed by parents is not acceptable for 2C out-of-state transfers. The link in the slide will take you to the preview application. When the preview application closes, you can find the same document on the landing page of the appeals application. 3.3 and 3.4 date on the document. We trust what you do and actually take any dates on the document, including request date, signature date, fax date, email date, receive date stamp, as you can see on the screen, and even mail date written on the document. But every once in a while, we run into a document with no date. Please make sure you have some date on the document that you received. 3-3 and 3-4, date alignment. When we locate a date on the document, we check the following. Number one, is the date on the document on or around or after the last IC exit date for your student? Number two, is the date on the document any before the end of the cohort year unless the document is confirming the enrollment in the cohort window? I'm going to pause a bit here so that you can process this information.
And what do I mean by document date planning before the end of cohort year? Remember, the cohort graduation rate is calculated based on the end of cohort year graduation status. Graduates, non-graduates, and out of cohort. We want the document date to be plenty before the end of cohort year because this shows that the student exited your school and still had an opportunity to continue his or her education to possibly graduate on time. When the exit date and document date are plenty before the end of cohort year, we accept your appeal. On the other hand, when the transfer date is too close to the end of cohort year, the student may not have enough time to graduate in a timely manner. Plus, it is not fair for the student to be transferred in the next school to receive the student at the end of the cohort, right? But we understand in some cases, students do transfer at the end of the cohort year. So in those cases, please provide evidence that the student was on track to graduate. And lastly, what do I mean by document day after the end of cohort year? This shows that the student did not graduate or transfer before the end of cohort year, unless the document shows his or her enrollment retrospectively, like in the form of enrollment verification. Any document with document date after the end of cohort year will be rejected, but you can keep the document for next year to appeal your five-year cohort graduation rate in case the document is for your four-year cohort members. And we are running out of time. Do you have any questions before we end this webinar? Yes, there are a couple. What kind of documentation do you need for a student death? And if the student passed away after they, so if they're coded as 6A, you don't have to provide any documentation. They're automatically removed from the cohort as we, as we discussed earlier. But in some cases, student left and then later you find out the student passed away. In those cases, we require um, an online copy, copy of online obituary or um, sometimes people send me the parent communication or school notification. We don't really need official evidence like this certificate. Do you to put a student's name on file instead of an internal student ID when it's submitting an appeal. Yes, that, that would be helpful. I mean, EDOID would be fine too, but I think you're talking about comment section. It's just that it's easier for us and it show you that you understand the requirements when you have student's name or EDOID in the comment section. Thank you. What evidence for, quote, on track to graduate, quote, documentation? Transcript? Yes, that will be transcript. Great. Where again can we find the intent to homeschool form? Intent to homeschool form is, I think someone was commenting earlier that um, it's on the preview application. It'll be on the um, appeals application as well. It will be named as supporting document. Let me check here. Supporting documentation. It's under resources on the landing page. And if you scroll down to the page three, you will find notice of intent homeschool form. Thank you. And quite a few people are still asking for the PowerPoint slides. I will just, after we're done here, I will take the registration information and I will just send a mass email out to everybody with the slide deck and some of the links that we've been talking about here, if that's okay. Thank you, Taylor. And one last time, could you repeat the dates for the appeals window? Yes, so dates for the appeals window, it opens next Monday on the 25th and closes on November 5th for two weeks. And that's the initial appeals window and we process your appeal and you will have an opportunity to double check all work or resubmit any return appeals starting on December 6th through December 10th. That's for one week. If we see the exit reason is wrong currently, do we need to change that before the appeals window opens? Um, again, that's 
depending on the exit reason, this one right here, 4A, 4G, 4H, 4I, 5F, or 6A. If these are coded correctly, you don't have to submit any appeals during the appeals window because they're already assigned to graduates or out of cohorts. If you find any that are coded wrong as graduates or not coded, coded as graduates, I'd like you to fix it now because I will ask you to fix it during the appeals window anyways. And then plus, you will still need to submit an appeal for those kids. So it's totally up to, um, to the exit code. Um, any transfer exit codes, if anything changes, and it was correct at the time, but, but if anything changes, it's not the IC coordinator's job to go back and fix the IC, keep updating the IC exit codes. And then Ayaka, when and where will this recording be available for others to view? Well, we will um, do our best to post the recording as soon as possible before the end of appeals window for sure on the appeals application. Thank you. And then a follow-up to one of the previous questions. For example, I have a student that is marked, quote, within district, the same school, but he is deceased. Would I just submit the obituary and not worry about changing the code now? Yes. That would make sense to me. I mean, if that was the correct exit reason, was in district the same school was the correct exit reason at the time, then there is nothing that you need to do, but you just need to submit it an appeal during the appeals window with an online obituary. That's correct. Anything else? You know, if you come up with any questions, I'm here and my uh, contact information is included in the slide. And Taylor is also available. If you have any questions. One more while some people are logging off, Ayaka. If a student graduates during summer school, does that mean they would then be part of a five-year cohort? Summer graduates are included in the cohort. So if a student graduated after the summer, summer school of 2021, and if they are a 2021 cohort, they should be um, rolled back to the 2021 as a 2021 graduates, as long as if they are coded as 4A in the summer school IC file, or if you don't offer summer school in your school district, or if they took a class somewhere and then they came back and said, hey, I met the requirements, you would need to go back to the June IC file and then re-upload the June IC file with 4A exit code. And again, if you're not the IC coordinator, please contact your IC coordinator. If you're the IC coordinator, please contact your regional IC coordinator so they can assist you with corrective upload. I think no more questions are coming in. So thank you everyone for being here today. It was really nice to have you all here. Please let me know if you have any questions.